that order Daniel's execution. But I'm here to tell you that if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. High glory to God. And the thing that God has pronounced concerning your life, it shall not be reversed.
over and over and back to back, you realize there comes a time sometimes where you can be driving in your car, you can be sitting at work, you can be doing whatever it is. And sometimes when we don't have words to say because we don't understand the trials that we're experiencing, we may not understand the things that God has us going through.
Father God, we thank you, God. We thank you for every heart of every believer in this room, God. Thank you for their obedience, God. Thank you for their sacrifice, God. Lord, I thank you for putting it on their heart to give, to so, Father God. Whether it was today or whether it was throughout the week, Father God, or whether it be in the future, God. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people, Father God. As we seek to edify your kingdom, even with these gifts, God, we're believing you to do exceeding and abundantly above anything that we can ask or think, Father God. We're believing you, Father God, that every expense, every need that we have, Father God, regarding this ministry, God, you will meet us as you always have, Father God. We're going to believe you, Father God, for taking these gifts, Father God, and doing something supernatural, Father God, not just in this ministry, not just in this city, not just in this country, not just in this nation, but in this world, Father God. So, Lord, we believe you on this morning, Father God. We declare and decree, Father God, that you will extend this in its reach, that you will extend its influence, Father God, even with the smallest gift in this bucket, God. We're going to believe you to do something great, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. We bless you. We honor you. We reverence you. We adore you in this place, Father God. Have your way even with these seeds, God. And allow these seeds to manifest, Father God. We want to see a great harvest, Father God. We want to see a great harvest, Father God. Have your way, Father God. Be praised and be pleased. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. to release the rain from heaven. Hallelujah. Be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. God promised to bless us beyond measure. It is not your will to be mentally tormented. It is not in God's will for you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. The devil is a liar. God desires to release the rain from heaven. God desires to release the rain from heaven. Hallelujah. He promised that your former, God, glory to God, uh, the former rain. He talks about the former rain and he talks about the latter rain. But I'm here to tell you that God is going to release. How many know that he's more eager to bless you than you are to receive it? Uh, the word says, glory to God. If ye who are evil knows how to give good gifts, how much more will our heavenly father give of those who ask of him? Hallelujah. Amen. We welcome you to Contagious Church Charlotte. Hallelujah. My God, listen, I'm not, I'm not preaching today, but I get the privilege to introduce the most beautiful woman on this side of heaven. Glory to God. My ride or die. My babe, my boo, my sweet thing. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands and help me celebrate? Prophetess Charlotte.
you that I'm already stirred up, so I'm going to allow the Lord to have us where you can continue to play for just a little bit. As I was preparing for this message, I heard plenty of peace. And I said, okay, Lord, plenty of peace. What does that mean? What does that look like? You know, we have Bible scholars and theologians in the church and people who watch us online. I'm so grateful for you. And, and, and so they need Bible. They need scripture. They need a foundational. And I heard in a still small voice, the Lord said, encourage the people on today. That is, as you release your testimony, as you release your trauma, as you release the tragedies in your life, that he will give you plenty of peace. That he will in turn give you wells of peace. And I said, okay, Lord, that's, that's fantastic. But I need somebody in the Bible. Because pe we have theologians, right? We, we, we have people who, who want to know the Bible. So he gave me three scriptures. And I just want you to write them down because I'm going to talk to you today. We're not going to go verse by verse and, 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 and line upon line. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to share yes, with you because it, it rings true. If, if any of you know, Prophet is the Lord, my spiritual mind. I love her with everything that I have. And she carries so much wisdom. And I was talking to her about my testimony. And she said, baby, baby girl, you are holding the evidence. Uh -huh. And I said, mom, you just slapped me in the face. She said, you are holding the evidence that Jesus is real today. She said, you are holding the evidence. And people don't want to know about the characters and the stories in the Bible. But people want to know about, is God real today? Yes. Does he give us peace today? Yes. Does, he, does he part the Red Seas for us today? You know, sometimes the Bible is so far-fetched, so far removed from who we are and what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that we forget that we're living, breathing, moving, miracle testimonies. And the church, and let me apologize on behalf of the church, we have done our people a disservice that we get them in these churches and we tell them about the Bible, but we don't show them how to live practical lives. We don't show them how to get through things. We don't show them how to grieve, get a therapist, and deliverance. Yes. We, we, we don't show them how to do that. But let me tell you on today, if, if, if only one person leaves today knowing that God did it for Shanika, uh -huh. he gave me plenty of peace. He oh, healed Lord. me and he delivered me. He yeah. gave me freedom like no other. It can absolutely yeah. happen for you today. I'm not special. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You are also fearfully and wonderfully made. And everything in this book that, that guides us, we can model our lives after. We no longer can believe the lies of the enemy that we cannot uphold the standards of this word and live righteous before him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So one of the, the scriptures is Psalms 29 and 11. It says, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Did you, did you get that today? Did you get that? That's a promise for you. Amen. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. My God, that got me. That was the first scripture that the Lord sent me to. And then he sent me to Jeremiah 33, 6 through 7. And I'm going to read it because in this passage, of Jeremiah, he talks about the promise of restoration. And on today, your restoration will include plenty of peace. Amen. Uh -huh. So it says in verse six, nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. That, that, that blessed me. Because if we're talking about plenty of peace, if we're talking about releasing our testimonies, if we're talking about releasing the trauma, the pain, and the sorrow of our past, then he will bring us back to new. He will bring us back as you were before. He will rebuild you like new. He will give you peace and security. Say that today. He will give me peace and security. Peace and security. Peace and security. Amen. And then the last one he gave me was Job 22 and 21. 
It says, submit to God and be at peace with him. And this way, prosperity will come to you. And so, yes, yes, that's good, right? And, and, and the Lord said, okay, so, and when people have peace, when they are no longer bound by the enemy, bound by their circumstances, bound by their testimonies, then the prosperity flows. And we're, we're trained to think that prosperity just means finances. Uh -huh. But prosperity means a, a, a myriad of things, joy, laughter, health, uh, material things, wealth, you know, knowledge, wisdom, all of those things encompass prosperity. We have to get out of thinking that prosperity only means uh, monetary, right? It is, it's, it's a wealth of things, and, and with peace, you will have prosperity. With peace, you will have security. And, and, and the Lord says, when we release the things, mm -hmm. when we release the trauma, when we release the pain, when we release the sorrow, yes. that he will fill us with plenty of peace and that he will give us wells of peace. I don't know if you've ever seen the wells where they have the wood and you have to put a bucket down there. Have you ever seen those wells run yes. dry? Yes. The Lord said he will give you wells plural of peace so that means if you're having a moment if you're going through something and this well has been tapped out you can go to the next one That's right. My God. and you can draw up some peace you can draw up Hallelujah. plenty of peace amen yes. and so the, the lord was telling me he said you have to tell job's story and so i want to tell you job's story but i'm going to also release my testimony because plenty of you don't understand the fullness of what people go through, especially pastors. It seemed like we have it all together and we didn't have any trauma and tragedies in our lives, but um, the opposite is true. A lot of us have been through a lot of things, but what I have learned as a child, I'm going to share with you on today. So if you understand Job and his story, he was blameless and he was upright before God and he revered God, he honored God and he turned away from evil. He didn't do any of those things and you you know, we all know in the story that he went and he prayed for his children all of the time because he didn't want any hurt, harm to come nigh them. He wanted them to do right in the eyesight of God just as he did and just as he taught them to do. But plenty of us know that when we have children, sometimes they don't always do what we teach them to do. Amen. But as if you allow God to take care of them, they will be fine. Amen. And so Job was upright before the Lord and the Lord was having counsel and the, and the angels came about them and Satan came up and he said let me tell you um the only reason job is honoring you the only reason why job is 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 is, is serving you is because you have a hedge of protection around him and i can't get to him mm -hmm. And that's almost an insult to somebody who really loves the Lord. Like, I will only serve him because he has a hedge of protection around us. We have to get better as a people that we don't serve a God that we only get blessings from. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Let's change the narrative when praises go up, blessings come down. No, when I praise the name of the Lord, uh -huh. he takes care of everything that I need. Amen. Let's rewrite the narrative. But Satan went and told the Lord that the only reason he is... He, he's serving you is because you haven't allowed me to deal with him. And so the Lord gave him permission to go down there, touch some things, but don't touch his body. Amen. And so that was the first tra um, the tragedy. The Sabians attacked his children, attacked his goats, amen. And, and, and one came back to report. One came back. I don't know what's happening. Something happened. And then lightning fell. And, and this is tragedy number two. And again, goats and sheep and, and, and children and all those were taken care of. And then a third thing happened. The Chaldeans came and attacked. Mm -hmm. And now it, you would think at this moment, this is tragedy number three, uh -huh. that, okay, Lord, what are you doing? Where, where is my peace? We're talking about plenty of peace. Where is, what is going on? But what I learned about the story of Job is he didn't murmur and he didn't complain. And he didn't, he didn't sin against God. He just stood there flat-footed and blessed the name of the Lord. And then Satan went up and said, now listen, I've touched his children. I've touched his livestock. I I've done everything that I could for the material things around him, his family. Then what else can I do him? If I touch his skin, surely, surely he will curse. You know, we, we funny about this flesh, although we need to let it die. Then we, we, we real funny about when these things get afflicted. When we have a pain, our toe hurt, our pinky hurt. It's like we can't do nothing. 
right, 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 right. right. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta let this this flesh die. And so the the God gave him permission to to allow him to be afflicted with skin boils, but don't kill him. Because, you know, we serve a God that does not kill us. He gives us life and life more abundantly. Amen. Amen. We have to know that the enemy comes to skip, steal, kill, and to destroy. But God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. So, Job was afflicted with skin boils. Uh And, And as I'm learning, as I'm reading, as I'm understanding, the first thing that Job did was grieve. He rose up he tore his robe he shaved his head he threw himself on the ground and this is what so near and dear to me he worshiped the lord he didn't call his homies he didn't call his best friends he didn't call his sisters his brothers he didn't call his wife he didn't go on facebook and say all these tragedies happened to me he didn't go to instagram and say look what's going on with me he didn't do any of those things but he grieved because that's our natural response amen, amen. and then he worshiped the lord which is our spiritual my god all which right. is our spiritual response amen yeah, yeah. when we walk after the spirit we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh so although he grieved naturally and grieved culturally he worshiped the lord in spirit and in truth and then he said jehovah gave jehovah has taken away blessed be the name of jehovah the lord had given the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord can you imagine the plenty of peace can you imagine the wells of peace you would dig for yourself when you go through certain things and you say let the lord give it the lord take it away blessed be the name of the lord not being a religious but standing firm on the word of God. Can you imagine what he will release into your heart? When Keandra was singing, release the rain from heaven. I said, the Lord said, release your testimonies and he will give you wells of of peace and he will give you plenty of peace. And in all of that, he did not sin. Uh It's possible. In all of that, he did not sin. And then, you know, the story goes when his wife came, are you going to uh, curse God and die? <laughs> My husband says this all the time. You're speaking like a foolish woman. He loves to say that. But Job was serious. You're speaking like a foolish woman. He said, we accept prosperity from God. We accept good things from God. Shall we not accept misfortune? Uh-huh. Wow. Yep, yep. Should we not accept misfortune? We live in this world, we're not of it, but we live in this world. So we know that trials, tribulations are gonna come, but how do you handle them? How do you take it on? Do you release it over to the Lord or do you hold it and let it torment you and and continue to traumatize you over and over and over again? No, we have to get to a place where we release it over to the Lord so he can give us plenty of peace, amen? And so the story goes on, and I want to get get to the good parts, but the story goes on that his friends came seven days and seven nights, and they were quiet. This was even peaceful. They just sat peacefully for seven days and seven nights until one person spoke, and then this got me because I said, okay, Lord, every time something happens, I hear peace. So when Job grieved, I heard peace. When he tore his robe, I heard peace. When he worshiped the Lord, I heard peace. And then when his friends came, I heard plenty of peace. And then his friends spoke and confirmed what I heard. His friends said, if I speak, will it vex you? Uh-huh. Jesus. My God. If I speak, will it vex you? If I speak, will it tor- torment you? When, when I speak, will it aggravate you? Uh-huh. When I speak, will it irritate you? So that lets me know that Job sat in his plenty of peace. That Job sat real good in his wells of peace. If his friend had enough wisdom to say, if I open up my mouth, is that going to aggravate you? Is that going to disturb your peace? And so right now, you have to even be careful and be mindful who you allow in your circle, who you allow your friends to be um, to be around you when you're going through certain things in your life. Are they bringing peace or are they bringing turmoil? I don't know about you, but I want people around me that will give me wisdom, the word of God, a pep talk, girl, get yourself together, but then peace. Uh-huh. 
leave me with some peace. Amen? Amen. And so when the friends spoke, they all spoke. And then Job, I mean, just like, can you imagine losing all 10 of your children? your livestock, and everything that you have. And Job's response to his friend is that his hope and peace is in the defender. Wow. Wow. Let me say that again. His hope and peace is in the defender. Mm -hmm. The defender of heaven and earth. The defender who sits on the throne. Mm -hmm. The defender, God. Amen. So we have to understand that our hope needs to be and our peace needs to be in the defender. Right. And so, like I said, we live in this flesh. So Job got a little testy with the Lord in his speech. He did not see it, but he did get a little testy in his speech. And the, the story is and we all know that Job received double. We always say double for your trouble. But he received double because he honored the Lord, he worshiped the Lord, and he he released it over to the Lord. And so with that, my my story, my life is very reminiscent of Job. And the disclaimer is I don't um, profess to be like Job, but I believe that I tapped in to the heart of Job when I was going through. And so at eight years old, and I, 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 I dealt with physical abuse mm -hmm. and verbal abuse as a child. And I remember at eight years old, I was sick at school and I went to the nurse and the nurse took my temperature. And back then, uh, they did everything that they could do. They gave you tests at school and the nurse said, you have strep throat, you need to go home. And so she called my mother and my mother came to pick me up. And then the whole way home, I heard cussing and fussing and you just did this for me to get off of work. And I remember getting to the house and before I go on, th this represents our, our tragedy, our pain, our trauma. And the moment we release it, we release it into the wells of peace. Amen. And so I was, she set me on this velvet bench. It had flowers on it. And I remember her looking at me so angrily. And she grabbed my neck and she choked me and she pushed me back. Mm -hmm. And she pushed me back so hard that the, the legs of the bench flew back with me. And she screamed and she said, you're just doing this just to get me off of work. And I didn't say anything just like Joe did. I didn't, and let me, let me give you this also. I'm, I'm a believer. I've been a believer all my life. I've been in church all my life. My father's a pastor. He's still a pastor. So I knew if I tapped into the God that I served, even at eight years old, I knew that he would protect me. And as she continued on her, her rampage, she left me there and I didn't move. Mm -hmm. I sat in fear. And I remember her going into her room and she's shutting the door. And then I knew that I can get up and go to my room and that I will be okay for the moment. And so I went to my bed and I put the pillow to my face and I just cried out to the Lord. I didn't say, why did this happen to me? Why did you do this to me? Why did you allow this to happen to me? I said, Lord, I need you mm -hmm. at eight years old. I want you to come in. I want you to protect me. And I put the covers over my head and I released the abuse. And he gave me peace. Mm. Okay. He gave me peace. Jesus. Mm. And I went on and other things happened. And then I remember that I was, I was 15 years old. And I, I did a lot of things in the community. I did a lot of things at church. I did a lot of things at school. And I was working and my father was away preaching and my mother was on another rampage. And I remember coming home late from work and she was on a rampage and I was the punching bag. I'm, I'm the, the baby girl out of four girls mm -hmm. and no one else was there. And she went on a tangent and her go-to was to choke. And so she grabbed me with both of her hands and she held on so tightly that she tore the muscle in my neck. Yeah. 
And I did not know that it was torn immediately, but I was in so much pain mm. that I knew something was wrong. Yes. And just around the corner from our house, there was a minor emergency. And so I'm getting ready. I get the keys to my car and I'm getting ready to get in. And she said, wait, I'll take you. Now, if you've ever been physically abused, tormented, or whatever, you really don't want your abuser sitting next to you when you're trying to go get help from the pain. Mm -hmm. And I get in the car, and I move mm -hmm. over, and she's driving, and I'm just quietly praying, mm -hmm. quietly saying, Lord, don't let it be too, too bad. Don't, 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 mm -hmm. don't let the, the pain be too bad. You, you have to do something. You, you have to show up and I have to be quiet because she's sitting in the side. Yes. But I know like Job, if I release the pain that he will give me plenty of peace. Yes. And like I said, we've been taught to keep secrets. Yes. Yes. We, we've been taught mm -hmm. that if we protect yep. the abuser and respect our family, that we will have peace. Mm -hmm. That is a lie. Yes. We are supposed to expose the enemy, yes. expose demonic influences, expose yes. demonic systems, yes. expose strongholds, yes. so then you can release, receive yes. your peace. Yes. No longer will we live in a world where we hold the secrets of the enemy yes. and torment Lord. and sit in torment yes. every day. And so yes. we drove up to the minor emergencies. And she said for me to go in and lie about my name, lie about my social security number, and then when my father come back to lie that I fell at work while I was mopping the floor. And as a good little girl, you do exactly what your parents tell you to do. But I had the peace of God because I released it over to him. You, gotta you have to turn it over to the Lord. And so long story short with that one, my muscle was ripped, but it was nothing that could not be healed because I prayed in the car. Lord, don't allow anything to, you know, dramatically change my existence. Amen. Amen. And so now we're at Christmas of 1997. And two of my sisters had left. To, my older sister was already out of the house. And two of my sisters had left to go to college. And I remember them getting ready to go. And I remember her screaming, I just wish that you would be leaving and not them. Mm. And as you guys know me now, I'm the same bubbly, social Shanika that I am now that I was then. So you can only imagine what that did to you know your heart and your mind and your and, you know your psyche as you listen to these things and we know they're all demonically influenced but even at the time it, it wrecked me so my sisters left and then they came back and and this was christmas 1997 and and i'm 17 years old and and i'm downstairs in my bedroom and um my sisters were down there and my mother comes downstairs and she's screaming and she's yelling about wet towels on the floor. Jesus. And I'm laying in my bed because it's Christmas 1997. And she said, whose are these towels? I said, they're my sisters. And she said, no, you did this. I said, okay. Just like Job, I didn't speak. I didn't sin. I didn't go against the Lord. I didn't go against my mother. But I was tired at this time. And she choked me again on Christmas 1997. And she scratched my neck good enough that our blood started to trickle down. And I want you to understand that the reason I'm here today is because the Lord has given me wells of peace. He has given me plenty of peace, plenty of healing, plenty of freedom to share the traumas of my life with you. So you can understand just like Job, if I can do it at 8, 15, 17, and so on, so can you. And so I went back into my room and I'm like, okay, Lord, 
what do I do? What do I do? So I released it to him. And then this is just how the enemy wants to snatch you back sometimes. I ran upstairs because I, 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 I got some courage. I ran upstairs and I ran to my father and I ran to his. And I said, Daddy, 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 you need to protect me. And I waited peacefully like Job did with his friends. And I waited. And it seemed like the seconds ticked by. You need to protect me. And he said, I'm not going to get in the way of my wife disciplining my child. And I said, but daddy, daddy, it's not discipline. It's abuse. She, look at me. I'm bleeding. And peacefully, I turned away, went back downstairs, went into my room, and I said, Lord, I don't know how much longer I can deal with this. You have given me plenty of peace. You have given me wells of peace, but this flesh is, is really starting to, it's really starting to get in the way. I, 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 I can't stand it that much longer. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Just like Job said, the, the God, the Lord said, did, were you there when I hung the stars? Were you there when I hung the moon? So I knew in that moment, if I just leaned and trusted in the name of the Lord, that she could not kill me because he doesn't kill us, right? He comes to give us life and that life more abundantly. And then I also know that the things that we go through in our life is not for our own. Is not for our own. I have to help you, Coco, how to get plenty of peace and wells of peace. Loretta, I have to teach you how to walk in your peace. And if I was the one who did it first, by all means, I'm here. I'm here. The Lord will give you plenty of peace. And let me tell you this. Be free from the secrets that hold you bound. Be free from the secrets that hold you bound. You're not protecting the legacy. You're not protecting the family name. What you are doing is protecting the enemy. And if you get that in your mind, no longer will you sit there and stay and say, I, I, I'm going to hold these secrets as if it's not your story to tell. The Lord tells us by we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And let me tell you this, if you don't deal with the devil in one area of your life, he will show up in another. Yes. Yes. And so if we get to a place where we release the trauma, the tragedies, if we release our testimony, the no longer will the enemy come back to you trying to tempt you with going back into the hole where you set yourself. We have to get to a place where we release it over to God so he can give us plenty of peace. Amen. Amen. How many of you want plenty of peace today? Yes, How many do you want wells of peace today? Hallelujah. How many of you want to live in peace? Yes, God. My God. And so th th this is one of the last things. And, th and so and I went... That was one of the last prayers. So Christmas 1997, I graduated from high school in May of 1998. And I knew if I can just hold on a little longer, if I hold on just a little longer that I can get out of the house, I can go to college, and then I won't be back. And so that's what I did. The Lord preserved me um, until then. And I left, and I went to college and two hours away, and it was my peace. See, some of you thinking time and space between you and your tragedy <laughs> All right, won't work. But I went to college and sat in peace. I got to sit down and watch TV in peace. Yes. I got to sit down in my dorm and just be Amen. in peace. I got to just literally smell the flowers, walk around campus, giggle and laugh in peace. Not because I was so great at releasing it over to the Lord, but because he is my peace. He is my prince of peace. 
and he gave he sent me to a place where I could receive physical peace Amen. And, and he told me that releasing the story releases the chains of bondage. It creates a well to receive plenty. It, re it, re it receives, I mean, it creates a well to receive your peace. It, it gives you plenty of peace. And like I said just a second ago, if you don't deal with the enemy straight up in one season, he will show up in another. And I know for many years that we, we I did not directly... You know, go to my mother and say, you, you know, you've done all these things. We've had tons of conversation about it, but that's not for this moment. But we, we, my husband and I were a part of another ministry for 10 years. And guess who showed up as our leaders? The same abuse that we dealt with at home. I dealt with at home. So in order for us to walk through this life, in order for us to receive wells of peace, in order for us to get plenty of peace, then we have to release our testimony we have to release what we've gone through in our lives no longer can we sit back and say i'm okay i'm good i'm 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 fine so we say that a lot as women i'm fine but it's a lie you're not fine you have to release what holds you down you have to release the strongholds you have to disconnect yourself from the bondage of your tragedy you have to disconnect yourself from the strong Holds. And so he can give you plenty of peace when you do so. He can give you wells of peace when you do so. if you go back and you're thinking about this or you're thinking about sorrow, you can tap into the sorrow and the, and the wells of peace that's already there. Uh, yes. uh -huh. Release it over today. Joel went through tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Shanika went through tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Yes. And I'm standing here and I'm telling you that it, peace is your portion. Yes. But what you have to do, what do you have to do? You have to release it over to the Lord. You have to release it over to God. You have to understand that if you disconnect from the tragedy, the trauma, and the pain, because it's not your identity. Some of us wear the pain, the tragedy, the sorrows, the, the rape uh -huh. as, as a garment. Mm -hmm. That's not your identity. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works of the Lord. Uh -huh. It's not your identity. Yes, God. It's not who you are. Yes, Lord. It's not your personality. Yes. Our personalities belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have to give it over to the Lord. You have to give it to him. You Look at this. You have to give it to him. Every time you give him a pain, an issue, trauma, yes. tragedy, disappointment, sorrow, a memory, and every single time yes. you give it over to God, you're feeling your well of peace. Yes, Lord. Every single time. That's why we can laugh in the face of adversity. That's why we, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's why we can giggle when we go through stuff. So, you know, when we say, you can, um, you can, I, I have to laugh to keep from crying. That's the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. The bill is due. It sends me back to when we didn't have anything. I'm going to bless the name of the Lord because peace is my portion. I have wells of peace to draw from. I have plenty of peace. When I look on the TV and I see somebody who was physically abused by their parent, no longer will I go back to the tragedy and the trauma, but I will sit and say, I'm praying for that young man or young woman because if I can sit in my plenty of peace, so can he or she. Yes. And everybody attached to me, everybody attached to my name will live in peace, will have plenty of peace, and will have wells of peace. Yes. Do you believe it on today? Yes, Do you believe it on today? Are you ready to receive wells of peace from God? Are you ready to receive yes. your plenty of peace? No longer. No longer will you allow the enemy to keep you in bondage. No longer will you allow to keep the shame and the guilt of what you've gone through keep you from receiving your wells of plenty yes, and plenty of peace. Yes, the shame and guilt no longer will run the course of your testimony. Yes, 
no longer allow it to run your testimony. You release it with grace. You release it with poise. You give it over to the Lord. You grieve that thing. Grieve it. Grieve it in the natural, but respond in the spirit. Respond in the spirit. Worship the name of the Lord. Get down. Praise him. Do whatever you have to do to receive your plenty of peace. Yes, God. How many is with me on today? How many want to receive their plenty of peace? How many want to receive their wells of peace? How many are tired of being bound by the trauma of their lives? How many are tired of being bound by the enemy's lies? How many are tired of holding the secrets of the enemy? It doesn't even sound right when I say it. We are holding the secrets of the enemy. We are holding the secrets of the enemy. And like mom prophetess Valora says, we are hiding the evidence from the people. Yes, God. I am Job. Uh, you are Job. You are Job. You are Job. Yeah. You are Job. Uh, you are Job. Yeah. Uh -huh. We will sit in plenty of peace. We will eat in plenty of peace. We will commune in plenty of peace. We will have joy in plenty of peace. We will cry tears of joy in plenty of peace. We will live in plenty of peace. We will walk in plenty of peace. We will live in plenty of peace. We will ride in plenty of peace. We will walk to our jobs in plenty of peace. We will sit at our desk in plenty of peace. We will watch TV in plenty of peace. We will bake stuff in the kitchen in plenty of peace. We will walk around the park in plenty of peace. And we will release plenty of peace over to our children. We will release plenty of peace on our lives. We will release plenty of peace to our neighbors. We will release plenty of peace even to our enemies. Because the Bible says he will make our enemies be at peace with us when we are as righteous before him. Yes, yes, yes. Plenty of peace is your portion. Yes, Plenty of peace is your portion. Plenty of peace is your destiny. Yes, Plenty of peace is now. How many need plenty of peace? How many want plenty of peace? How many desire to have plenty of peace? This is a safe environment. No judgment zone. We say all the time, we've heard it all. We've been through it all. Y'all got a smidgen of what I've been through in my life. I can sit for hours and tell you what I've been through. But today we are free. Our wells are full of peace. And even if I have a moment, even if Jen, I have a moment, I can go back and say, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I got wells of peace. 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 I got plenty of peace. I got plenty of peace to give. I got plenty of peace to share. I got plenty of peace to fall on the ground. I got plenty of peace to pass around. Amen. We will walk in plenty of peace. We will live in plenty of peace. We will have wells of peace stored up because we are not our own. We are not our own. People are attached to me. People are attached to my testimony. People are attached to you. I have to trinkle. I have to trink the, the, the peace, the peace behind me. So if you need peace, you pick it up. Come on, Keandra. If you need peace, you pick it up. You pick it up. I got peace for you. 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 I got peace for you because I've been through it.
everybody that's attached to us will have plenty of peace. Will have wells of peace. They'll pick it up along the way. You might not know how to do it today, but if you pick what I dropped for you, you will push on for another day. That's why we are a community. That's why we are contagious. Because the plenty of peace that I have is for you too. It's for you. The well, the peace that I have is not just for myself. But you got to release it. You have to release it. It might hurt. It might bring you anxiety. But you have to release it. And let me assure you one thing. As God is the God of heaven and in earth, you will have plenty of peace. Yes, you will be fine. Yes, just as I am today. Standing in my wills of peace. Standing in plenty of peace. If you need the Lord to fill your well with peace, come to this altar. It's open. We're going to have Apostle Reggie, myself, and pray over you. If you are ready just to release it. Sometimes The Bible tells us to confess ourselves one to another. So sometimes if you can just confess what you've gone through. Confess what has afflicted you. Because just speak your testimony. It will allow the, the, the Holy Spirit. If you want the plenty of peace to, uh, uh, of the Holy Spirit to come and, and feel that, you have to be willing to release it over to Him. Yes, How many ready to receive their wills of peace? How many are ready to receive plenty of peace? How many are tired of going through season after season, year after year, months after month, holding on to the traumas, the tragedy, the pain, the sorrow, the stronghold, all 